Okay, we're now moving into an area that some students tend to struggle with. I won't say it's simple, but it is reasonably straightforward. I've broken it into two parts. The first video will be about the four different types of market failure that are specifically mentioned in the study design. And the second part will be about what we can do or what the economy can do in order to solve these particular points of market failure. So, our free markets work on the assumption that resource allocation decisions will be made according to supply and demand. We know, we know the simplicity of that. Demand for a product goes up, you're a producer, you want to put more out there. You want to supply more to the market in order to make more money. Very simple. Okay, sometimes allocation decisions are not in the best interest. And this is also tied in, if you remember, with our four types of efficiency. Allocative efficiency was looking at making or satisfying the needs and wants of the economy to the best of the ability, but it didn't look at the issues, the rights and wrongs of those allocation decisions. It just looked at satisfying. And it's, it's the same sort of thing here. And these are what we refer to as market failure. Something has gone wrong, and if anything doesn't work with our, with our assumptions, we refer to that as market failure. Okay, there are four types of market failure, as I said before, specifically mentioned in the study design. They're all part of the key knowledge of outcome one. Public goods, asymmetric information, market power, and negative externalities. Okay, we're going to go through each one, one by one now. So, public goods, what are we looking at here? In demand, goods that producers cannot make a profit from. And we can look at that with street lighting and public parks. People want to walk down the street, they want to have nice little street lights, they want to go on a weekend to a public park, have a bit of a barbecue, play basketball with the kids, throw the ball for the dog, whatever else. Okay? But really as a producer, a private producer, can you make money out of street lighting or supplying public parks? Well no, the only way to make money out of public parks is if you put a fence around it and charge people to get in. So therefore it's not a public park, it's a private park. So public parks cannot be, they can't make any money out of it. And this is why it's a market failure. Because we have these goods, services that are in demand. People want them, but producers aren't willing to supply the market. So therefore it is a market failure. Also includes goods that uh, everyone doesn't pay for, but you can still use, Defence Force. If uh, you know New Zealand decides one day that they are going to invade Australia, we're going to want our defence force to stand up there. We don't all necessarily really pay for our defence force, but we all do technically use it. Okay, so that is why it's a market failure. So you get a question that says something along the lines of why are public goods a market failure? It's because these goods are in demand, and no one will well, producers aren't willing to supply them. Okay, it's not that oh because producers can't make money, make sure you put down that these goods and services are in demand. Okay, that's where the market failure occurs. The next one we're looking at is asymmetric information. What does asymmetric mean? Pretty much means unbalanced, it's not even. Okay, we have an assumption in our perfect market that we've looked at previously. All participants have perfect knowledge, whether they be producers or consumers, they all have perfect knowledge. Okay, in this case, asymmetric information that's not true. Where one party has more information than the other. It's, as we said, asymmetric means unbalanced or not balanced. So one party, more information, knows more than the other one does. And two good examples would be applying for a job and selling financial products. You go and apply for a job, the person interviewing has a list of criteria that you are expected to satisfy. Do you have these skills, A, B, C, D, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. To be perfectly honest, in that interview, you are the only person that knows whether you have those skills or not. You can sit there and say, yes, I do, I can do this, I can do that. But deep down, you're the only one that knows, can you do what you say you do? The person on the other side of the table pretty much is taking you at your word. They're going to do a background check, sure. But as far as these particular skills in this particular information in situation, one-on-one, -on -one, you, are, you are the only person in that particular uh, transaction, so to speak, that knows that you can satisfy. So that is a form of asymmetric information. You have more information than the employer does. Okay? When we looked at GFCs last the GFC last year, we looked at CDAs and derivatives, selling financial products. Do you remember the Senate committee coming in? If anyone can hear that, that's a plane going over. It's not a bomb. Right. The Senate committee said had 
brought the people up who were selling it and one of the things was that they knew they were bad derivatives that they were bad products and yet they were still selling them so in that case those people who were selling the derivatives the CDOs they knew that they they weren't what they were what they were purporting to be worth but you know what they were still selling them so the buyers were buying them the sellers knew that what they were selling was not um, would not do what they were saying it would do so they had more information so that's asymmetric information where one party has more information than the other okay market power again going back to our assumptions that we keep going, coming to uh, there are many buyers and sellers therefore there is lots of competition there's lots of competition among sellers lots of competition for products but there are many buyers, there's lots of competition, people want to, lots and lots of people want to buy your product, therefore it's just competition, competition. Okay, but now we consider monopolies and oligopolies. Monopolies, one, one firm holds the market power, oligopolies, well, only a couple of firms, but there's still only a couple of firms in that area. Okay, so they have no or little competition. Well, they can set the market price at any level they like. Think of a monopoly as Australia Post and Stamps. They currently charge, I believe, at 60 cents a stamp. If they want to make it a dollar forty a stamp, they they pretty much can. I know they've got to get government permission, but let's just work on free market at the moment. If they want to make it four dollars fifty a stamp, they can. You want to post a letter, unless you want to pay huge prices of uh, FedEx and companies like that. You go through Australia Post; they have a monopoly on that, really. Uh, an oligopoly? Well, that's the oil companies. There's only a couple of oil companies in the world that control the oil level of oil and they can pretty much set the market price whatever they like so in this case why is this a market failure because the demand is not setting price and vice versa okay we know as demand goes up price goes down or for my year 12s who dared me to say this uh demand go up price go down demand go down price go up happy guys yes i know you're all laughing right on so what's happening is we're not working on free market. The company itself is setting the price. Okay, so that is why it's a market failure. Too much market power. And, you know, if you want to look at a more local uh, example, I'd be looking at Coles and Woolworths with the uh, price of, say, bread and milk at the moment. Setting prices at $2 a milk, um, trying to drive competition out. I mean, they've got huge, because of the market power that those two have, People aren't necessarily going to the store for their milk anymore, they're going to Coles. And they can afford to run the milk at a loss because they know they're going to make profits elsewhere because they're such major companies. Okay. And the fourth one is the one that really confuses a lot of people, but really pretty simple, is what we call negative externalities. Free market considers profit, actual revenue less actual cost. That's what the whole thing's about. And when we make our assumptions in our free market, that's it, that's our cost, that's our how much we make. The difference is our, our revenue or our profit. Okay. However, externalities are referred to as the side effect costs of production. Those costs that we don't consider, they don't come under this part here, the actual costs of production. Okay, the cost to society, they're not considered. So we can look at costs involved with producing cars. Cost ten thousand dollars to produce a car, we sell it for thirty thousand, we make a profit of twenty thousand. However, under externalities, you've also got to consider the external cost, of the side effect cost. Running that car will create pollution. We have a cost of pollution, which we'll look at in the next video. Okay, same with things like casinos. Casinos, can, they can build up. This is how much the cost is. This is how much the rake's in there for its actual profit. But there are other costs to society that are involved with casinos. We have problem gambling. And there are costs of programs in order to allow people to sort of get over their problem gambling. There are some areas in the world where there's casinos and crime has gone up. Therefore, they've had to increase the costs of crime prevention, all these sorts of things, simply because of the casino. So that's what we're looking at when we regard externalities. We're going beyond the actual cost and we're looking at side effect costs, okay? Cost to society that aren't in the actual cost of production. Okay, so remember the four that we've gone over, the four types of market phase, I said they're all in the study design, so you really need to know them. Public goods, asymmetric information, market power, negative externalities. Okay, lovely.